do here is go back, 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 back. So today we're going to interview some students at the Myrna Martin rally. A group of students have organized to stand in front of Myrna Martin's house in solidarity with her as the conflict between the university president and FHSU faculty grows. So we'll see what they have to say. You know, we really have tried to take an approach that isn't taking a stance on this. Um, what the primary, uh, I guess, factor that influenced this was just the article that came out. I know a lot of students saw that, felt that there was, you know, maybe a little lack of voice for the student body um, in that. And so just they were looking for an avenue just to express their support of uh, the president as we're going through this and, and a lot of stuff is still not available to the public. Uh, so, do you have a particular stance on um, caps and overloads? I know that was a big uh, issue that was addressed in the article. Can you speak to that at all? You know, uh, I don't believe I have enough information to take a stance on that. I think there isn't a lot out there for people that aren't directly involved in that conversation to really hit one side or the other. Um, and so, again, this event, I want to steer clear from making a stance on that and just showing the president that we are there for her during this time. Uh, so why did you come out today? Um, I personally came out because I figured she seems like a nice lady. I haven't personally met her, but I really like where, where like the school and the atmosphere, and I think that's probably a good portion of her doing, so I'll support her for that. <laughs> uh, what do you think of the Hayes Daily article that came out? this past weekend? I've not yet read it. I've heard it's pretty extensive though and I imagine it goes into some pretty de deep detail but yeah so I can't can't give a solid base on that. <laughs> so this whole I mean the whole drama between the faculty and the president I mean where do you stand on that? Um, I, I haven't done the like as much research as I probably should have but Personally, like the president, um, I don't know what she's doing to make them that mad. Should probably read that, but yeah, just figure I'd support her. <laughs> so here with Isaiah Maxi, uh, Maxi, what made you come out today? It's just I hear about all the things that's happening with uh, Dr. Martin. I just want to show my support. You know, she's done a lot for me personally. You know, just showing me love, and I just figure I should show it, show it back. So what kind of positive experiences can you share about Mirta for people who don't know that side of her maybe? Um, she's invited us she's invited us to her house. She's she's showed us around the house. She's been very open with us. She's attended a lot of our sporting events. You know, she she tells us about her family, she tells us about her experiences. She tells us she 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 got on me about not being ready for graduate school already. And uh, I still got a year and a, a year and a half left, you know. She's just the the parent away from home that I feel like we all need. So I'm here with Val. Um, Val, what made you come out here tonight? Um, or today? <laughs> President Martin has been supporting everything um, a lot of her students do, so I'm here to support her in a time that she needs it. Okay. Uh, is there some positive experiences that you could share for people who maybe haven't seen that side of Myrta Martin? Um, I have not had nothing but positive experience with her. Um, she comes to every game whenever we're in the band. She's always hanging out with us. She comes to all our openings for galleries. She comes to concerts. She comes to everything. And she's nothing but supportive for it. And she's just such a wonderful lady, so I'm here to support her. Awesome. Uh, so, have you read the Hayes Daily article? Yes, I have. What's your position on that? Well, that's not really for me to say because I'm not really on in that opinion. Like, I'm not really in that side of it so I'm just showing my support as a student where I can fully like a hundred percent know what I'm saying and I I'm trying to just accurately be a supporter here okay so for students who I mean I know the Hayes Daily article was a lot to process a lot to understand for students who are on the faculty side of things uh, how would you break it down to them in ways that they could understand um, Dr. Martin is acting as a steward of the public dollar. 
uh, uh, with, uh, with respect to the issue of overloads. Um, and it, uh, she is capable, and her, her solution is going to bring, um, is going to keep tuition, uh, is going to keep the tuition down basically. Because um, under the current system, if you hire, um, if you use tenured faculty to teach overloads, what happens is you have to pay uh, higher, uh, to, to pay more, um, and therefore the cost of tuition is higher. And we're talking about introductory courses um, where the abuse is happening. So, uh, does, I th yeah, I think that, that makes sense. So, uh, it's costing the students more to have full-time faculty teach these overload classes, whereas you could just hire adjuncts, have them teach the classes, and have a lower rate, right? Right, and what I also would like to add is, um, if the issue of overloads is one where it's not necessarily about hiring adjuncts. It's also about uh, hiring, uh, you know, full-time faculty um, uh, if we have a need to do so. If you have overloads, what happens is that uh, those instru instructors who are teaching overloads, they're doing that on top of their uh, uh, on top of their current on top of their established responsibilities. So they're using more, so they have less effort, they have less um, obviously energy and time to devote uh, to distribute to um, uh, to their teaching. Right. So uh, and that has a negative effect on students. Um, so the issue, the, so the issue here is deeper, um, uh, in that sense. Okay, that makes sense. Uh, I guess from a student perspective, the one thing that I was curious about is increasing the cap size. Mm -hmm. So if you increase the cap size, um, does that have the potential to limit the number of sections that a class would have? Because from the student's perspective. Um, my only concern with that would be, you know, less flexibility with picking your schedule and stuff like that. So, uh, do you think that would be a problem if that did happen? Uh, well, cla increasing class size. Um, well, what I would like to say is, we right now live in the in the times of financial austerity, meaning that that the the, the state has cut uh, close to twenty percent of the budget. So we need to find solutions. Um, and so, as a way of uh, um, keeping our institution, so, so increasing uh, class size by a certain percentage is part of the conversation that Dr. Martin started. She hasn't made any definite decisions yet. Um, we certainly are an institution that is known for small class size, and, and that's great, uh, but we've also been cut 20%. Uh, and we need to find solutions. We need to keep our tuition affordable. We need to keep faculty employed. Um, uh, so it, it would appear to me that it's, it's at least reasonable to have a conversation with administration about in, um, a percentage increase of class size.